of those is going to give me one y. And I'd end up with the same four points. Because all the points are equal. Yep. No matter how you approach it, you're going to get the same answer. Try another one. I'll tell you it's a little bit easier. That's the good news. Solve the system of equation by using the substitution method. So the first one is x plus y equals negative 1. The second one is x squared plus y squared equals 25. Let's say you started with the bottom and you solved for an x. You'd end up subtracting and then square rooting. Is that something you want to be dealing with? No. So try to figure out a plan before you even start this, which tells you it's much easier to solve for one of the first ones, right? Does it matter if you solve for x or y first? No, so pick one. What do we want to solve for? Let's solve for y. So we're going to take this equation and we're going to solve it for y, which means subtract the x. Now that I've used that one to solve for, I have to take that and plug it into the y on the second one. So x squared plus negative 1 minus x squared equals 25. I still have to expand and FOIL, but these will be a little bit easier numbers. So if I expand that negative 1 minus x times negative 1 minus x and FOIL it, first is 1, outer is positive x, inner, positive x, last, positive x squared. And I get 1 plus 2x plus x squared. When we put it back in, we're going to have to factor. So, you're not so we're foiling out in the beginning so that we can combine terms and get it equal to zero. We have to have it equal to zero before we can factor and solve it. Okay. So I've got to do this step. Now I've got to take this and plug it back in the place of that one. So this is x squared plus 1 plus 2x plus x squared equals 25. As soon as you see a squared and an x, you should know you're going to have to factor. You want to get everything to one side. And make it easy on yourself. Put it in order of highest exponent down to none. So there's 2x squared, x squared plus x squared, which would be 2x squared. Subtract the 25. I'd get negative 24. And then the 2x is the last term. Now I've got a factor. First thing you want to see is can I factor something out? So is there something I, on all of those three terms that I could take out? A 2. Make it easier on yourself. So take out the 2 and I get x squared plus x minus 12. Now what? Good. So other x plus 4, x minus 3, right? Factors of negative 12 that sum to positive 1. Now, if I'm multiplying by 2 on the left, how could I get rid of it? Divide by 2. Divide both sides by 2. It's going to cancel from here. What's 0 divided by 2? 0, right? So if I have a constant on the front, no matter what, it's going to go away if I'm dividing. Now, each of these could equal 0, which means x could equal negative 4, and x could equal positive 3. Now I have to take both of those x's and plug it back in, and I can plug it back into either one of these. So because this is linear, it's probably easier to solve it by plugging it back in there. So one at a time, I'm going to plug my x's in. I'll plug in negative 4. So when x is negative 4, y is 3. And then I'm going to plug in 3. So when x is 3, y is negative 4. So again, if you think about what this is, this is a circle with a radius of 5, and this is a line. If I solved it, I'd get y equals negative x minus 1. So this would be a line that runs through 
that circle is going to hit it at two points. Questions so far. So sometimes you're going to have two answers. Sometimes you're going to have no answers. Sometimes you're going to have three, four. Usually it's going to be two or four or zero. Okay. Questions on substitution. So you're solving one of the equations for one variable. You're taking it and plugging it back in. All right. You try it. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've got, again, one that says this is a, a parabola and a circle. Okay if I look at it that way. And I've got two squares in the top, one in the bottom. To avoid the expanding and foiling, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, but this time we can if we just solve the bottom equation for y. I mean, sorry, for x squared. So if I multiply by negative one, I get negative y plus five equals x squared. And then in place of this whole x squared goes the negative y plus five. Plus y squared equals 25. And then as soon as you see, the y squared and the y, it's your hint to get everything to one side and factor it. So I'm going to subtract the 25, get negative y minus 20 plus y squared equals 0. Put it in order of decreasing degree because that's what you're used to when you're dealing with factoring. And then I'm looking for the factors of negative 20 that sums to negative 1, which would be what? Negative 5, positive 4. Set each of these equal to zero. Y is five and Y is negative four. So now I've got the two Y's. So if I was to build a solution set, I already have a negative five and a negative four. Now I want to find the X's that go with that. So I could plug it into either one. Okay. Uh, I could plug it in here or I could plug it in here. This might be a little bit easier. X squared equals negative y plus 5. So x squared with 5 would equal negative 5 plus 5. x squared equals 0. x would equal plus or minus the square root of 0, which is just 0. And then do the same thing for y being negative 4. So minus a negative 4 plus 5. becomes x squared equals 4 plus 5, x squared equals 9, and x would equal, and this is where most people forget the plus and minus. There's two y's there. So this is really 3, negative 4, and negative 3, negative 4. So every time you've got your x squared equals a number and you go to square root it, make sure that it's plus and minus. Ian. Is it more beneficial, like, either way, just to, like, like, when you're doing, when you're first doing your equations, like, does it, does it matter if you have to, like, you solve for x or y? No, I mean, each time it's going to be a little bit different. If I can solve for a squared and avoid having to expand and foil, then I would say take that approach first. Okay. If not, you're going to, like, if that wasn't squared, either way I was going to have to expand and foil. And then it's just, like, you know, whatever might be easiest or obvious, most obvious for you. Yeah. Karina. Yeah, so all three of them would be answers. 0, 5, 3, negative 4, and negative 3, negative 4. So if you thought about it, again, like this would be a parabola that was y equals negative x squared plus 5. And the first is a circle with a radius of 5. So a circle with a radius of 5. Negative x squared plus 5 means it went up to here and pointed downward. So that's where your three points come into play, the very top on that parabola and then the two intersecting points on your circle. All right, now we'll do elimination. In my opinion, elimination is easier. That's the good news, okay? So elimination is exactly that. You're trying to eliminate a variable by combining these two equations. So hopefully you remember elimination from just the linear systems. But typically what you want to do is line up your variables and line up your constants. So you want your x's in a line, you want your y's in a line, you want your constants in a line. And you want to make it in a way in which when I add the two equations vertically, one of those variables cancels out. So if from the beginning, if I add these, are one of my variables going to cancel out? No, no I get 40x squared plus 50y squared <laughs> equals 200, okay, to, 210. But what can I change so that I cancel them out? Okay, so you can multiply the top one by a negative one. 
negative 4x squared minus 25y squared equals negative 41. And then add these. I get 32x squared, this is gone, equals 128. And I only have one variable, so I don't have to factor here. I could simply divide by 32. This is 4. And then square root, making sure I do plus and minus. So my two points are going to start with a 2 and a negative 2. With me so far? Yeah? Yeah? Now I'm going to take each of those and plug them back in one at a time. So I'm just going to grab this one because it has smaller numbers. You could plug it back into either one. 4 times 2 squared plus 25y squared equals 41. 4 times 4. 16. Divide by 25. Y squared equals 1, which means Y equals what? Plus and minus the square root of 1. So now this one point at the top just divided into 2. I've got positive 2, negative 1, and positive 2, positive 1. Ian. Why didn't you plug the two back into the equation after you plug it in? Uh, it doesn't matter. You can plug it back in it either way. Really? Yep. Yeah. All right, now I've got to plug in my negative two. So I'm going to take the same equation. I'm going to pull it over here. Four, negative two squared plus 25 y squared equals 41. What's the difference between squaring a positive two and squaring a negative two? Nothing. Nothing. So what's going to happen the rest of this equation? going to be the exact same thing. Yep. So this also gets divided. Negative 2, negative 1, and negative 2, positive 1. So this is, these are two ellipses overlapping, which if you think about it, if it was like this and like this, there's going to be four points that overlap. So, oops, a daisy. So this, in my opinion, elimination, the steps are easier. The plug back in might get a little bit more tricky because most likely you're going to be doing elimination on ones that have two squared variables in both. So some of these equations lend themselves to substitution and some of them to elimination, but you're going to get instructed which ones to do. So the guesswork is taken out of it. All right, so again, directions this time say solve using elimination. If I add them, do they cancel? No, I got to change one of them. What can I change? Top one by negative one. Would it matter which one I changed? No. no. So negative 25x squared minus 9y squared equals negative 225. This cancels. This is negative 25 y squared equals 175. Divide both sides by negative 25. How many times does 25 go into 125? Or negatives? Huh? How many quarters into $1.75? Okay. What happens here? What happens when I go to square root this? Can I square root a negative number? No. This is no solution. So this would probably be two ellipses that do not, no, that's an ellipse and a hyperbola. So you might have an ellipse that's up here and a hyperbola that goes this way that may never overlap. Or an ellipse that's here and a hyperbola on the outside that may never overlap. So if you end up with a squared equals a negative number, okay, and you go to square root it, it's no solution. Questions? If you solve for a variable first, if I solve for x and I go plug it back into y, and when I'm solving for y, I get the negative number, it's still no solution. So be careful. All right, so I'm going to 